I hope we didn't buy Lemon Man. That's what I'm more worried about. I think we're doing okay. I think they're legit. They're super nice folks, but. Yeah, I like this boat. Well, we can ask if he wants to trade. No. All right, you ready to get back to Missouri? Come on, here we go. <laughs> And that was my first reaction after hooking up the boat, getting into the truck and starting to head home. Guys, thanks for tuning in again. My name's Josh here at Very Terrain, and I did it. I bought my first bass boat and I'm really excited. But what I wanted to do was share my experience with you so that when you are out buying a new boat or even a used boat, that you can go and look for things with confidence and realize good and bad deals. The size of the boat mattered to me a little bit, but again, things that were working and water ready and garage kept were really important features for me to have in a bass boat. I really preferred a bass boat with electronics that weren't really old. So anything Hummingbird, Gen 2 and beyond, Lowrance, Garmin, it didn't matter to me which brand as long as it worked and it had it. The other option that I really wanted in a bass boat was a trolling motor with spot lock. And fortunately for us, this bass boat that we got had a Minn Kota Altrex on it. Uh, it was a 24 volt, or it is a 24 volt. And I'm really excited that I got that. I also got the Gen 2 uh, Helix 10 and a Helix 12 with the late cards for my region already in there, which saves about 150 bucks. The other thing that I really wanted to see on the boat is that there were no major cracks in the structure of the boat, that the upholstery was good, or at least redone. The carpet was good, not torn up, or at least redone. And we found a boat that actually had all of those things as well. We looked for months for a boat. Uh, we looked on boattrader.com and we also looked on Facebook. I didn't dare kind of look into Craigslist, not saying that you can't find a good deal there, but I just didn't do it. And luckily we found our sellers on Facebook. Uh, they were in Illinois and we had to drive kind of a far way to even look at it. So I really wanted to hash out everything before I made the drive and make sure that this was something that I wanted. The people that we bought from were more than happy to communicate. They disclosed most everything. They were just good people. And yes, good people are still out there. So when you're dealing with a seller, find somebody that's willing to communicate, that are friendly, and knows what they're talking about. And usually you can determine if they're honest, good people for the most part. So what did we end up with? We ended up with a 2002 Ranger Comanche 518VX with a 200 horsepower, even, <laughs> even, 200 horsepower Evinrude two-stroke motor. Now, I know that there is a lot of uh, opinions about the Evinrude E-Tech motors. A lot of people say they're not reliable, but watch this as I turn this switch for the first time. turned over first crank it sounded awesome here are some tips that I would recommend that I didn't necessarily follow but it is highly recommended that if you're gonna go and look at a boat and you're considering buying it take it out on the water see if the owner's willing to get out on the water with you and you can test out all the buttons you can listen to the motor you can see how the boat handles all of those things at a minimum if you can't do that Consider, if you're seriously looking for a boat, to get something like this. This is an apparatus that allows you to run the motor while not in water. These slip over the water intake on the lower unit, and you hook a hose in there, and you turn the hose on, and you can start the motor without damaging it and uh, hearing how it sounds. <laughs> The other thing with the motor, make sure you take the boat cover off. You smell around, you feel around to look if any oil is leaking or any gas is leaking. If that's the case, I would go ahead and maybe pass on that. This owner also disclosed a couple of cracks in the body. I have a connection down at Precision at the Lake of the Ozarks and uh, 
he said it was basically cosmetic and with a 20 year old boat you're gonna have those little minor cracks that are just really small there was only two that he disclosed i found another one but again it wasn't anything to worry about what you're looking for are any structural huge cracks in the hull on the boat anywhere that run across the boat you will probably really want to avoid those and avoid the headache the other thing that i recommend that you do is open the hatch where the batteries and the oil are it's usually located in the back of the boat close to the motor and check your batteries for any corrosion make sure that the bank charger works ask him to plug it up and it should just start working and uh, it'll tell you the batteries are full you'll see it light up uh, but make sure that that is something that is well taken care of before you decide to purchase the boat. The next thing you wanna look for is to turn on the power and test all of the buttons and electronics as much as possible if you can't get it on the water, but just test and make sure that they work. You know, a lot of the speedometers on boats don't work. A lot of people use their electronics, so that's not a deal breaker. In this particular boat, it did not work. Every other dial worked on the dash of the boat and all the hummingbirds worked fired up just fine and i think i really got a steal with that something else i didn't do until i got back home uh, was ask about the type of fuel that he's actually or she's actually putting in the boat some motors especially the evan rude two strokes do better with uh, gas that's ethanol free high octane from like shell or bp I would maybe avoid just kind of going up and getting any gas to put in the motor. It really could affect the function and performance of the motor that you have decided to buy. Also ask about how many hours and see if you can't get a printout from the owner uh, about how many hours that has been run on the motor. This motor that I bought had 380 hours you can get a motor to last a thousand or 1500 hours before really needing to maybe do anything major on the motor again when we got there they were the nicest people just take a look howdy how y'all doing good how about yourself pretty good are you tim or clint this is clint all right and melanie nice to meet you nice to meet you and josh josh good taste man i just picked up this oh cool yeah i'm clint brian brian that's me but you're the guy that posted it this yeah, is your sister? that's my sister. Yep. Okay, all right. Also, when we got there, the boat looked awesome. They took the time to wash it down and get it ready, pulled out for us. I wanna thank them so much for just being so easy to cooperate with, even after I've come home. Been so willing to talk and answer any questions that I've had. Another thing to look at is to get under the boat and look for any scratches or cracks in the hull. This is major. I know I mentioned this already, but get under there and look for structural cracks in the boat. Now I'm not talking about rubs with like shallow timber that maybe have scratched the gel coat. You know, those things are gonna happen, especially on an older boat. So don't be too alarmed as long as it's not too deep and into the fiberglass, but those things are gonna happen on the hull of a boat if you're buying, especially an older boat. You also wanna check the trailer, make sure all the lights work on the trailer, make sure that the trailer welds and the pads that are underneath are in good condition and none of the welds are rusted or breaking. You know, with this boat, it's been garage kept. It really d hasn't had the opportunity really to sit outside in the elements and rust out and, and be not functional. Make sure that the brakes are in working order. Also, make sure that the tires on the trailer are, all, are good because you don't want to start out with getting a boat and then buying tires already. That could be very expensive and kind of disheartening when being a new boat owner. Also, Brian, thanks for going out there with me and taking the day to spend time with me and bringing the boat back. And the last thing is, guys, have fun. Season starting. More videos to come. Thanks for tuning in. I much appreciate you guys so much. See ya.